2017 Ram. It's got the 6.7 Cummins in it. 8,734 miles. It's two years old this month. And I know FCA wants the fuel filters changed every 15,000 miles or 12 months. I think it ought to be done to two years. So let me know what you guys think in the comments on this. Don't have any experience with a 6.7. This is my first one. And on the fuel filters, I don't know what they can tolerate. Yeah, you can see there, fuel filter life, 41%. Gallons used, 473. I'm not sure if the number of gallons used even comes into the equation on this. I think this is simply mileage based. On the oil, it seems like it's exactly 15,000 miles. Every 150 miles is 1%. And my truck's been running the same way on the fuel filter. Every 150 miles, she drops a percent. So I'm going to start with the back one first and see how that goes. The first thing I'm going to do is take off the fuel caps just to keep any pressure from building up on it. Now I've got an auxiliary tank. The connection you want to break is up on this cross tube. You wouldn't think there would be, but there's two holes drilled in it. You can feel it up here. These two white inserts, they'll snap into there. They just pull out. Go on, put the camera down and I'll tell you what's going on with that one. We'll take a closer look at that when I get the filter off outside in the light. I'm going to leave the water and fuel indicator threaded onto the filter and I'll separate them two when I get it out. Well, I have some quarter inch Tigon tubing, which is going to be too small. That looks like it might be three eighths. I've got this big stuff. I'm going to slip it up over this and have your drain pan. I'm just going to reach up there and go counterclockwise with it and try to catch it and let it drain like this. Let's see how that goes. Let's see how tight it is. I have no idea. Now, maybe it's not counterclockwise. Seems like it's going awful tight. Very tight. <laughs> well, I wasn't expecting it that tight. Okay. That's all plastic. So I'm going to have to go online and see is it right hand threads or left hand threads. So I'm going to get online and find out what gives there. Stay tuned. Okay, a little research online showed me to go counterclockwise with it. It looks to be 100% plastic components up there on that water and fuel indicator. Guys, anytime you're dealing with plastic components and it's threaded, take your time and go ahead and just stop what you're doing and research it online. Find out which way to turn it, clockwise, counterclockwise, find out what's going on. That could have went either way because what you're doing, it's going up in it to release that fuel out. So it would make sense to go clockwise to thread that up, but left-hand threads, and it appears that's what it is, I'm going to go counterclockwise. I'm going to loosen it, but as I loosen it, this knurled piece is going to go up into the WIF indicator to release the fuel. And online says that is a 3 8 nipple on that. And unfortunately, I don't have any 3 8 laying around. Okay, it's just threading up in there. It takes several turns. I got no fuel coming out yet. It looked like it could have went a good 3 8 of an inch. There comes the fuel. I would tilt the camera down and show you the fuel coming out. It's just coming out in a pretty steady little stream. But it's also working its way on the outside of the tubing. Maybe I went too loose. I don't know. I'm going to go clockwise a little bit. Clockwise another half a turn and it's still draining steady. I'm gonna go clockwise some more. I've got some more coming down my hands, I think, than what's going in the tube. So well, I'm assuming it's it has to drain the entire filter. It's the way it's unless it's designed differently inside. Can't tell yet. There's all the way counterclockwise. And we stop draining now. We're gonna drip a little bit on the drive shaft, that's fine. We'll just wipe her down. I'm gonna remove the tube, you just throw it in there. Okay, now we're going to go get a strap wrench and see how to proceed up there. I've got band wrenches and strap wrenches. I don't know which one I'm going to use yet. We'll get her on video. There we go. That's a big turn there. Okay. We're going to get her. We tried the drain valve again. I, I tightened it back because it was dripping, making a hell of a mess on everything without the hose on it. It's dripping on drive shaft. Then just run it back here by the differential. Got diesel fuel on the camera, but that's my fault. Let's go ahead and open it again. You get a little bit. Sometimes when you crack a seal loose on a filter, once air gets on top of it, you'll have another slug run out of it. May or may not be the case this time. Oh yeah, that's the case. <laughs> Big slug coming out. So keep that drain hose on it. 
Open the WIF drain all the way. You'll save yourself a big mess. And slowly take that filter counterclockwise. Once it gets some air up there on top of it, beyond that O-ring, you'll have quite a bit more come out. That's my fault for not getting the exact same hoses. If I'd have got me a 3 8 inch ID piece of uh, Tygon tubing or something, I could have just stuck it up there and walked away and let it drain for a half hour. Not have to stand here and hold it. Say I'm in for a long drip because that filter media holds so much fuel and it releases it slowly. Just the nature of the filtering media. I'm going to go ahead and try to take it off. Okay, the camera's on. Let me see how this is going to go. Pick him up, put him in your hand. I just hope the fuel doesn't continue coming from the tank. Well, there it is, so not too bad at all. I'm gonna have to tilt it, come out of here. There we go. Yeah, very little's coming out of the filter, so. And the O-ring came off with the, the filter, so it's all good. When you unscrew your sensor, just get an idea of how tight it was. It's an O-ring seal, too. Also, these threads in here are plastic threaded too. Looks like they're pressed into the metal. So you got plastic on plastic there. But again, you have an O-ring seal, so the O-ring looks good. I don't know if the O-ring comes with a new filter or not. I'll have to get into that. But the good news is, for two years old, there's no rust anywhere on this filter. I'm not afraid to go two years. I don't know if I'll go any further than two years or not. The jury's still out on that. I'll see what some of the comments are. I'd appreciate if you guys would comment if you have any feelings on going out two years or beyond. If you haven't reached your 15,000 miles yet. And on this clip, I think I got lucky. I thought you squeeze these two together. You don't. I checked online and this is depressed. It's like this. And you can clearly see it. Let me make sure you can see it. I want to show you the water and fuel indicator. You got your two electrodes. But what I wanted to point out was the drain. Right now it is closed. We go counterclockwise. And you're raising that round washer up real thick. Looks like it maybe looks like it's maybe a quarter inch deep in there. Can't really tell how the bottom of it is shaped. And then as you tighten, it draws back down against the base. Now Ram says after you contact the base, go a half a turn. And that feels plenty good enough. I'm going to use Dow Corning number four silicone grease on my gasket because it could very well be on there another two to two and a half years. I only buy the genuine Mopar filters for the fuel. That's the way it came. And the O ring is not on the base. You can see there, it looks like it's off to the side. And I do feel that smaller one in there, so it looks like I'll get a new one for the water and fuel indicator. Be careful with your electrodes when you're messing around. We'll put just a little bit of Dow 4 on it. I'm not going to put Dow 4 on both sides of him. I'm going to mash it in there for the... Well, really, there's no mashing to it. Looks like she's just going to lay in there. There is a channel for it to go into, but there's not... Uh, well, if that don't go in right, you'll know it. As I press down on one end, it's wanting to come up on the other. I don't really like that. I'm not going to worry about him now. We'll get the WIF in it. Pipe dope shouldn't be needed because we have an O-ring. Now think back to how tight it was when you broke it loose. Now remember what I showed you on the WIF? Ram wants you to take it till it closes. There's where it hits the base. And then go a half turn. Plenty tight enough. If you don't have Dow 4, use motor oil. Use a good clean cloth or towel. Make sure the base is good and clean. Just be careful putting your filter up. It snakes up through there real easy between the fuel tank and the drive shaft. You should have enough room between the tank, the, the fuel tank shield and the drive shaft to get your wrist, your arm up in there. Keep that old, keep that flat old ring flat on the filter base.
I'm gonna go hand tight. Hand tight as tight as I can get it. And I'm gonna use my strap wrench. And we'll try to gain about another quarter turn on it. There's about a quarter. I can never leave well enough alone. The only thing you got left to do back on this one is to make sure you get your WIF indicator plugged in proper to the harness. It's going to take two hands and I don't know if any of that will show up on the camera or not. I doubt it and that's not really a big deal. You're just plugging this harness back into the one you back into the one that you unplugged it from and you're going to snap it back into the that cross cross member on the frame. It's got a couple of plastic pieces that just push into it and hold it in place. Well the clip part where you push is going to go opposite of the white the white hold downs. So and there's a nice firm snap guys. You gotta like that. Now if I can find them two holes where the plastic pieces go into it, that'd be sweet. Okay, they're right there. I like to have them right back exactly the way Ram put them. Just gotta find the holes. Sometimes that's not easy. Take a minute. Oh yeah. We hit it. You definitely don't want that wire coming down. It's gonna get caught on that drive shaft. No, I don't think it could. I think the other, other harness would hold it up. Okay, that concludes that one. Okay, the front of the truck, you have another filter down here by the engine. Down in there. We're going to open that yellow drain valve, petcock, whatever you guys want to call it. We're going to open that and drain fuel out of that container. But before you do, you need to come down. You can see the drain hose. Maybe you can from up here, maybe you can. It's got a very short drain hose on it. Now let me show you what happens if you don't put an extension on it. What's gonna happen is a huge mess of diesel fuel all over your differential. That hose ends right up there. It's gonna drip all over the top of this front diff. All I did is I got plenty of different sizes of clear tubing. I stuck it up in there about an inch. Ran it down here, took some tape and taped it to this. We're gonna drain into this. We'll take a look at it and see how it's done. Okay, that yellow valve, you turn it counterclockwise about a quarter of a turn, you can see the diesel fuel drain in here. It's coming out in a pretty good little stream, but you get the idea. You want to drain it before you take the lid off. You'll have to use whatever extension architecture you can come up with. This is Geno socket, shallow, 28 millimeter, six point. Definitely use a six point, because that's plastic. It's three eighths drive. I got a three eighths swivel on it half inch to three inch adapter and a 20 inch half inch extension to get me above everything. So that's what I'm gonna try. Your mileage may vary. That's got like a really good fit on there. Now I'm just going to try to break it loose. That's not bad at all, guys. Using standard half inch ratchet. I do everything I can to prevent diesel fuel from running all over that motor. Okay, I'm, I'm hand loose there, so let's try to take it off of it. I think the idea of Geno socket is just uh, the fact that it's, it, it is a very low profile. That's just a little over an inch tall, so that's pretty neat. Um, I think it's worth it. Okay, I'm gonna go down there with my right hand. Okay, that broke loose a suction seal, I guess, because I got a pretty good stream running out now on my hose extension. 
Let's let that drain just a little bit. She's still draining pretty good. I'm gonna turn the camera off, I'll turn it back on. I'll give you an idea how long it ran out. I'm sure no more than a couple of minutes. Okay, that drained about three or four minutes. There shouldn't be a, any left in that container. Okay, it looks like the cap comes off. You're seeing it for the first time, same as me. I'm gonna pop it loose, then I gotta move the camera to get it out. Gotta be careful doing this. This is, this is when you can have a disaster too. Okay, it, it broke the suction seal down there. Okay, it's just going to lift on out of there. I'm going to set it back and move the camera. Well, there it is. 8,700 miles and two years old. I mean, you know, no obvious dirt or anything like that. Of course, you know how they're made. It's an outer filter and an inner filter. This is definitely not your grandfather's filter for diesel fuel. Okay, we're going to take a look inside, inside the filter housing. I know you guys can't see it, but it's absolutely spotless. Even with the mirror, it is spotless, so... I'm glad to see that. Uh, just a little info on this fuel filter. It's a pretty exotic filter. It gets right down to it. This is a double filter. It's five microns on the outer that we're looking at here. And the inner goes down to three microns. And just keep in mind that uh, human hair runs 50 to 100 microns in diameter. They average 75 to 80. Uh, a little tiny piece of bee pollen runs about 30 microns diameter. A micron is one millionth of a meter. So you're talking one millionth of 39 point whatever inches. So it just kind of gives you an idea of the, the, the time, or it gives you an idea of the, the care, and, and we hope the quality that are in these filters. They're protecting the high pressure fuel system on these Cummins diesels, and uh, it's pretty impressive. I don't see why they have to be changed out every 12 months if you don't have your 15,000 miles. If I don't have the 15,000 miles, I'm going to go at least two years. I don't know if I'll go longer or not. Keep in mind now, when you're inserting this, the inner 3 micron, it's an oblong. It has an oblong shape to it. If you get that hung up on there crossways, and you turn this, the inner unit spins within the outer unit. So you'll have to lift up a little bit until you get it in there. You'll know when it's in there. Okay, when you insert that, you're gonna feel it when the inner sleeve fits on that oblong shaft. You'll keep going down. It's got a good amount of tension on it. You can feel the O-ring sliding on it, making a seal. When you get down to the bottom, it's like there's a small shelf. You push a little bit more and it snaps firmly into the bottom. You'll have no doubt when you reach the bottom. It went in, it, it's, a, it's a piece of cake to get it in. Now we're gonna put the new O-ring on the top cap and torque her down to spec. Okay, I wanna show you something here. The instructions says you can use an inch, inch and an eighth socket. It's 28 millimeter, six point. They do stress six point, because this is composite. This is a plastic. So they're saying you can use a 28 millimeter six point or an inch and an eighth six point. Well, I'm gonna show you, this is the special socket, low profile, three inch drive from Geno's. It is 28 millimeter. Okay, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I hope you can. It's a really good, good snug fit. Now, I'm moving it left to right. Very snug fit. If it was any snugger, you'd have a hard time getting it on, okay? Now here's the inch and an eighth, six point cobalt socket. A Little bit more slot. But is it gonna work? Heck yes, it's gonna work. If you have an inch and an eighth, six points to key. Don't use a 12 point. These have been rounded off with 12 points. If you've got an inch and an eighth, six point, don't hesitate to use it. And this is gonna go back at 23 foot pounds. They actually say 22.5, 22, yeah, I think it's 22.5. We'll go back at 23. Okay, we got a new O-ring in place. Might be very hard to see. It 
feels like it's down at the base of it all the way around. I did put new motor oil on it as specified in the instructions. I only used Dow Corning 4 on that back filter because that's a big, thick, flat base O-ring. This is a round one. Using motor oil on the back one would have been perfectly fine too. But I've had good luck using Dow 4 for long term on oil filters that have rubber gaskets or flat base O-rings. I realize you can't see nothing. Neither can I. I can feel it going in place though. Let's see if I can get another angle. Don't think I can. Yeah, there it is. Okay, while I'm here, I'm gonna shut that drain petcock off. It's open one quarter turn. I'm gonna go clockwise till it stops. I know you guys probably can't see squat here. And I'm not sure how effective a torque wrench is through all these angles. It's got to lose some value of torque going through that. But the idea is, we'll be close to 23 foot pounds. I got it set on 23 foot pounds. Sounds like it's tightening. Let's see if we can get a click out of it. Oh yeah, well that's good enough for me. Okay, on my drain tube extension, went ahead and cut that. Now we're ready to try to get the air out of the system. Okay, we'll tighten down the fuel caps. And try to cycle it a number of times. three times. Let's try it. If it don't start up, we'll shut her off. You guys know how quick your truck should start, so I wouldn't crank it much over what it's what's considered normal for a, a good start. I cycled the key off and on three times between each start. So it took a total of nine cycles in the third try. Now we'll get out and look for leaks. And then we'll come back and reset that to zero. Okay, we have zero leaks. Hold the right arrow to reset all. Okay, we're at 41%. Confirm reset. Arrow down to OK and hit right arrow to confirm 99%. I wonder why it didn't go to 100. Oh well. I'll write down the date and my mileage anyway. So, Okay, well, thanks for going through all that with me. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comment sections. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And, uh, if you like it, go ahead and hit that old like button. 
and I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe. If anything comes up in the future, I'll be sure to make a video about it. And thanks for watching, and have a good one.